some new Macs. Apple had its scary fast, scary fast event. And I'm saying that because it was probably the shortest keynote that I can ever remember Apple having. It lasted about 30 minutes. That was it. Uh, it was in the evening. Everything about it was sort of weird. You may have already heard some of my reactions and first impressions on the Mac Geek Gab podcast. Uh, Dave Hamilton had me over there with Jeff Gamet uh, on Monday night after the event, and we kind of went through all the news and announcements. So if you missed that, uh, go check that out if you want to hear all of my uh, impressions and thoughts on how the event went and the announcements that were made there. That's over at macgeekgab.com. If you're not already subscribed, I would uh, encourage you to do so. So they did announce new Macs with M3 processors. Uh, we have the M3 processor, the M3 Pro, and M3 Max. No M3 Ultra yet. As far as the chip breakdown goes, the M3 chip is an up to 8-core CPU with an up to 10-core GPU and supports up to 24 gigabytes of unified memory. And then you have the new M3 Pro chip, which has up to a 12-core CPU and up to an 18-core GPU, supports up to 36 gigabytes of unified memory. And then finally, the M3 Max chip, which has up to a 16-core CPU and up to a 40-core GPU and supports up to a whopping 128 gigabytes of unified memory. Now, there's some interesting things and little changes specifically on the M3 Pro and M3 Max chips that seem a little bit odd and seem to be affecting performance maybe a, just a little bit. Uh, you know, it's really going to depend on what you're upgrading from, I think, this year with the M3 processor. So the M3 Pro actually has lower memory bandwidth than the previous M2 Pro chip. So it's 150 gigabytes per second versus 200 gigabytes per second on the um, on the memory bandwidth. And then when it comes to the cores, depending upon which CPU you get, um, the 12 core CPU model has changed versus the 12 core M2 Pro chip. And the 12 core has six performance cores and six efficiency cores in the M3, where previously the M2 Pro had 12 or had, excuse me, eight performance cores and, versus and four efficiency cores. So they've lowered the number of performance cores and increased the number of efficiency cores in the M3 Pro 12 core CPU. And then at uh, Within both M3 Pro processors, they made some changes to the GPU cores as well versus the M2 Pros. So on the base M2 processor, M2 Pro processor, excuse me, you have a 14-core GPU with the 11-core CPU, and that's 14 cores versus 16 GPU cores previously on the M2 Pro entry-level chip. And then on the higher end chip, you get 18 core, an 18 core GPU with the M3 versus 19 cores you had previously on the M2 Pro. So some significant differences in the number of cores on that chip. Now, moving up to the M3 Max chip, it's also had its memory bandwidth adjusted a little bit. It does have up to 400 gigabytes per gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth but that's only on the price here 16 core cpu chip the 14 core version offers only 300 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth so apple has changed the architecture a little bit i don't know if that's specifically related to moving to the three nanometer process um, but they're just important changes i think to note if you're in the market for a new m3 machine i think real world wise it's not going to impact performance for a lot of people, but if you're looking for the highest level of performance, it does factor in, right? If you're looking for the biggest increase, especially if you're upgrading from an M2 system, um, and we'll talk about early benchmarks and stuff like that here in a second. Um, so just some things to consider.